nationwide news feed. Let's talk about it. Dialect to do something about it. Chip got the flow wide open. If you got questions about it, man, it's the show that brings you to your raw. To solve all problems, it starts with real talk. It's real talk. And here we go, here we go, as I pull my microphone down so I can hear myself and you can hear me on this Monday, the 18th day of, uh, what month is this? Uh, September 2023. You are in the midst of Real Talk Memphis. Welcome, welcome, welcome in uh, to uh, this edition on a very beautiful Monday evening in the city. Wow, what a gorgeous day it was today. Temperatures in the low 80s. Very nice. Uh, By the way, you do know that fall... Uh, is right around the corner. The official name, of course, is the Autumnal Equinox, uh, and that is about to uh, take place in about maybe, what, seven days, six, seven days, something like that. Uh, Temperatures cooling down, although we will see temps rise uh, to maybe the mid to upper 80s, no 90s in the forecast, so uh, a slow exit for summer uh, straight ahead. But very happy to have you with us this evening. I hope you will make us part of your plan for at least the next hour. Uh, We have a pretty good show for you this evening. Of course, uh, uh, you just heard uh, Level Lola, uh, another uh, great episode of that uh, broadcast. Always mellows me out when I, well, I don't know if it, part of her show mellows me out. And the other part of me, her show ratchets me up a little bit because, you know, you hear songs that you hadn't heard in a while. She putting them mixes together and everything. So nice job on that. So um, how do you get this fine piece of radio broadcasting? I'm so happy that you ask. Uh, right now we're on 91.7 uh, WYXR on the FM side. Uh, we are also on the uh, WYXR app. You can catch us there. You can also catch us on the TuneIn, T-U-N-E-I-N app. Uh, And we are on Facebook Live. We're live streaming on Facebook Live for this evening. And when the show posts tomorrow, you can catch us on YouTube if that is your thing. Uh, And as we are a podcast, you can catch us uh, after the show posts wherever it is you get your favorite podcast. And I know we're one of your favorite podcasts Because we just are. So that is how you uh, can contact us or find us, reach us, the whole nine yards. Uh, Tonight's guests uh, are are kind of varied, uh, I would say, uh, various categories here. Our first guest in just a few minutes is Sarah Houston. She is the executive director of Protect Our Aquifer. Uh, And there are some interesting uh, things happening uh, with our water. One thing people say about Memphis water uh, is that it is probably the best in the country. Very pristine, very clear, uh, and, and generally speaking, no problems to, to speak of. Well, uh, that might be changing just a little bit. That's why I asked Sarah to come back on the show uh, to kind of give us an update on what is happening in that particular area. Uh, a little bit later on, we're going to be speaking with Monique Williams. Now, you're asking yourself, who is Monique Williams? Well, Uh, Monique uh, is a restaurant owner, uh, and uh, more importantly, she was recently uh, appointed uh, to be uh, an alder woman in the city of Bartlett. She is the first black alder person, woman, person, man uh, in the history of Bartlett uh, to hold that position. Uh, And so she's going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, how she sees uh, why she decided to go for that in the first place and uh, how she sees her responsibilities uh, for uh, that city moving forward. And a little bit later on in the second half hour of the show, we're going to be talking about your health. Ladies and gentlemen, this 
is Sickle Cell Awareness Month, in case you did not know. Uh, and we're going to be talking with a doctor, uh, Dr. Zacharias, uh, Zacharias, uh, rather. Uh, he is uh, a scientist, he is an educator, and he's also uh, overseas uh, for Hari Health. And they're going to be having a, a very special health program seminar uh, event coming up here, uh, which basically uh, will tell you uh, about all the bad foods that you're eating and how you need to exercise more and the whole nine yards, you know, and, 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 and you know, get us kind of straight physically. And, of course, get our, get our appetites right, get our heads right, get our bodies right as well. Uh, we will get to all of that in just a few minutes. But on this 18th day of September, let's talk about birthdays. Many of you are celebrating birthdays today in uh, this month of September. And of course, uh, what we like to do is shout you out, celebrate you uh, for the person that you are. And of course, you have made yet another year. Uh, and uh, we like to uh, celebrate that accomplishment with the big shout out. But we can't do the shout out until I say, hit it, breath. Lola winding up, getting ready to get in position here in just a minute. Happy birthday is going out to the following folks. Tiffany Washington Rainey celebrating today. Grace Amanda Cosme having a birthday today. Erica Ransom. Erica is my niece, by the way. She lives out in Northern California. She's celebrating her birthday today. Happy birthday, Erica. Melissa Miller Solids is celebrating a birthday today. As is Shannon Downey. Deborah Johnson, Rosalind Holmes, Michael Farmer, Laquita Davis is celebrating today, as is Cheryl Williams, Jeff Calkins, the award-winning sports writer, is celebrating his birthday today. Clarice Randall, happy birthday to you, Terry McLaughlin, and Shannon Downey, and Lola. Happy birthday all the way to St. Louis for my cousin, Robert McGregor. Happy birthday, cuz. Love you much. Happy birthday, cuz. Cuz Robert. Uh, listen, to each and every one of you out there who are celebrating your birthday today or sometime this week or maybe even over the weekend, happy birthday. I hope that this day has been filled with love and laughter and that, well, you know, we're here next year to celebrate your next trip around the sun. Thank you, Brent. All right, so let's uh, let's dig in here and uh, see what is happening in the wonderful world of news and notes. By the way, uh, for those of you who, before I forget about this, for those of you who watch local news uh, and weather in particular, Jim Jaggers. Jim Jaggers has been in the television uh, weather business as a meteorologist for some 46 years. Well, he is retiring uh, from Channel 3. Actually, he has just <laughs> retired uh, from Channel 3 uh, this week. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they lost. Well, so that's Tim Simpson uh, left. And, you know, we had him on the show here about, uh, about a month or so ago. And now Jim is uh, headed for retirement as well. Uh, so we wish him uh, the best of luck. Uh, we were colleagues way back when at uh, Fox 13. Uh, uh, knows what he's talking about. Uh, he is going to definitely be missed. Uh, in other news and notes, <laughs> early voting, ladies and gentlemen, is underway. Uh, you know, you may have heard that there's a big election happening October 5th. Uh, the early uh, voting started uh, this past Friday. And I think uh, through Friday and Saturday, we had somewhere over 5,000 people uh, show up to vote. So far, I don't know what the numbers are today, uh, but this will go on for about 10 days. And then, of course, we'll pre be pre prepping for the big mayoral election and the, the city council election. So half the city council, by the way, is term limited and they will be moving on. All right. Which means that there are plenty of uh, candidates out there uh, to uh, vying to take their place. So listen, doesn't matter. Voting is important. Voting is important. Voting is something that all of us need to do. Voting is something that is a God-given right. Please don't take it for granted, okay? This, this election is the most consequential election we've had in decades around here. Uh, and uh, your vote absolutely matters. With 17 people running for mayor, it won't be a majority. It will be a plurality. So your vote absolutely 100% uh, counts. Now, you may still be trying to figure out who you want to vote for, and that's fine. You have every right to do that. Uh, but I hope you make a decision and head to the polls and cast your vote for whomever it is you feel you want to lead this city for the next four years. 
uh, currently uh, in, the, in a poll just released, uh, the leaders, uh, Paul Young uh, and uh, Sheriff Floyd Bonner, very close, uh, within a percent or two of each other. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, a lot of people are talking about former mayor Dr. Willie Harrington uh, in this race. So it's going to be very interesting. I can't predict this thing right now. I don't think a lot of people can. Uh, but uh, the percentage of people who actually go to vote are going to be the ones who are going to make the difference in this race. Watch and see. All right, uh, let's see here. Three, let's see, all five former officers uh, who were charged uh, for the death of Tyree Nichols have now been federally indicted. I don't think we had this last time we we, 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 uh, we uh, chatted with each other, uh, but they have been. They have been uh, federally indicted on civil rights charges uh, in addition to the state charges. So now you're being fed, you're being charged uh, by the state. Now you're being charged federally. Three of the five officers have asked the court uh, if they could have separate trials. Uh, that decision will be uh, rendered, I think, the next time they appear in court, whenever that is. Uh, we are all still on the lookout for Tamia Taylor. Uh, who is that, you ask? Uh, she's the 21-year-old Covington mother of two who was celebrating her birthday uh, about a week ago Saturday night with three friends from Jackson, Tennessee uh, on one of the uh, midnight booze cruises, you know, that leave uh, down off of, uh, you know, down off the river down there. Uh, she went out and when they came back, she was missing. Uh, they have no leads. The Memphis Police Department uh, has set up a command center down there. There's still no information on, on her, no new information to report. Uh, so we are absolutely praying uh, that uh, everything on that end turns out okay uh, and that she is found, as I said, she's 21 years old and the mother of two young children. So we are praying, absolutely praying, uh, that uh, she is found and recovered uh, safely. The University of Memphis uh, won uh, their third game in a row uh, over the weekend, so they're 3-0, and starting out well. Uh, the attendance still stinks. Uh, 25,000 people showed up uh, when they played Navy last Thursday night on national television, uh, but they did win. And uh, for those of you who are keeping up with uh, the University of Colorado, uh, led by Coach Prime, uh, they are 3-0 and as well. Uh, they won uh, a thrilling overtime game uh, over the weekend, uh, and uh, they march on. Now, one of their players, uh, Travis Hunter, who is a, a – this kid goes both ways – and you never see that these days where a kid plays offense and defense. That was a very chippy game, pardon the pun. A uh, lot of emotion, a lot of talking. These kids, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And this is a heated rivalry. Well, uh, Travis Hunter, uh, one of the stars for the Colorado Buffaloes, uh, took a cheap shot uh, by a player uh, from the Colorado State side. I mean, it was, it was a devastating hit. It was an unnecessary hit. Uh, and uh, Travis Hunter, uh, they, the reports say he has a lacerated liver, uh, and he could be out several weeks. So uh, we'll be praying for him, of course. Now, the player who hit him uh, with that cheap shot apparently has been getting death threats uh, from folks uh, at the University of Colorado and other folks who saw that hit as well. So, you know, I mean, you know, all of us who play ball, it's a rough enough sport. We don't need to go there. Uh, so we'll keep you posted uh, as to uh, what happens with there. And by the way... Um, uh, I can't think of his name now, but the uh, head coach of the University of Michigan State or Michigan State University, Mel Tucker, uh, has been informed that he will be fired uh, for actions uh, in reference to a phone call that he made to a handicapped individual uh, that uh, did not turn out to uh, be too wise a thing for him. All right, that takes uh, uh, a quick look at news and notes on this Monday evening. I am going to commercial. And when I get back, we should be joined by uh, Sarah Houston, Executive Director of uh, Protect Our Aquifer. On this Monday edition, it is so nice to be here on this Monday. Uh, I'm Chip. You know who you are. We'll take our first break of the night, and we'll be right back. Don't go away. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. 
WIXR is supported by the On Stage at the Halloran Center season, presenting the Memphis Songwriters Series, hosted by Mark Egger Stewart. Mark and his musical guests take audiences on a journey behind the music, sharing personal stories and introducing new works. The first event of the season is on Thursday, September 28th, and will feature John Namath, Sarah Spain, and Dion James. More information at orpheum memphiscom University of Memphis Department of Theater and Dance presents their fall musical, Murder Ballad. Murder Ballad is a steamy and thrilling rock musical conceived by Jonathan Larson Award winner Julia Jordan with book and lyrics by Jordan and music and lyrics by Juliana Nash. Murder Ballad runs September 20th through the 23rd at 7.30 p.m. in the Edward and Bernice Humphreys Theater Building on Central Avenue. More information can be found at memphis.edu slash theater. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this beautiful Monday evening in the city. Chip with you, and uh, of course, uh, whenever we th- one of the one of the positives, uh, one of the thumbs up that people uh, talk about the most when they talk about the city of Memphis is the water. It has always been, uh, I mean, ab- above everything else, pristine, clear, and 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 no issues. But you know, lately there seems to be a bit of conversation that maybe we, our water is not as pristine as it as it uh, generally is. Uh, so I brought on uh, my first guest, uh, who is a friend of the broadcast and and apparently a friend of a lot of folks on Facebook Live, because everybody's telling me to say what's up <laughs> to our, you, as, as we welcome in Sarah Houston. So hey, Sarah, good to see you. Hey, Chip, thanks for having me again. You got you have a big fan club out here, by the way. All these Facebook Live folks say, tell tell the water warrior I said what's up, Jet Lucas. Yes, and I love to hear that. Man, we got water warriors all around the city. <laughs> you surely do, Pearl Walker. There's a lot of folks out here like you. All right. So, uh, well, listen, welcome back to the show. And uh, I know uh, we talked about it during the break and talked about everybody being crazy busy these days. And I read uh, recently uh, about a survey uh, that was done or just completed about our water. And uh, there may be an issue or two uh, that uh, needs looking into. So kind of explain that to our listeners, if you will, exactly what's happening out there. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, back in the beginning of Protect Our Aquifers uh, origin, back 2016-17, listeners might might remember when TVA was going to drill in these wells across from the toxic coal ash ponds. Yes. So the concern was you pump a bunch of water right across from known toxic, you know, area, you're going to pull that contamination down faster. And that was kind of this wake up call to the community to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are there, are, is this a concern not only here, but elsewhere? And so back in early 2018, city council jacked up all of our water rates, 1% to pay for a study. So everybody that has an MLGW bill is paying 1% towards this big aquifer study that University of Memphis is doing. Okay. It just came out with the, you know, five years of studies saying that, we are getting way more what's called modern water. So not the good 2000 year old artesian well water, but much younger, potentially contaminated water is seeping down into our aquifer at a rate we never realized before. Oh, well, that's not a good thing. It's not good, Chip. It's not good at all. <laughs> so so this so this five year study uh, revealed this. Uh, and that's an interesting term that you use, modern water versus the the two thousand year old pristine water that we're that we're used to. So, so uh, w- what else did we discover? I mean, where did this come from? How, how did this happen? Right. So, okay. So, I gotta give y'all a little geology lesson. So, bear with me. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so, you know, if you go straight down into the ground, like downtown Memphis, then you're gonna get this shallow aquifer. We don't use that. Okay. We, that that shallow aquifer is known to be polluted 
in lots of places. Think back in the day, we just buried chemicals. We dumped stuff on the ground. We just didn't know better. Sure. Then you've got this thick clay layer. You go down a little deeper. This clay layer used to be thought as just this big, thick, intense, you know, layer of clay where pollution can't get through it. And then you get to the Memphis Aquifer. So the Memphis Aquifer is like this layer cake way down. Way deep, down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, we found out that there's actually, you know, natural gaps in that clay. And so all the pumping that we do, you know, we got a lot of big industry here, lots of big manufacturers that use a ton of water. And when they're pumping all that water, it's been pulling stuff down from the surface over the past 50, 100 years. Mm. And we're at this point in time, you know, our aquifer moves slow. That's one of the best things about it. It's these little bits of sand and all this water has to get pulled through it. But it moves so dang slow. We haven't known it's a problem. But time is catching up with us. That 50 year mark when we dumped chemicals before EPA was created, mm -hmm, we're mm -hmm. starting to hit wells now. And we're realizing this is a much bigger issue than we ever realized. But the good thing is there's an opportunity for solutions and conservation becomes a big part of that solution. So, you know, I'm not gonna harp on y'all for taking 15, 20 minute showers and we all like to get a little luxurious, okay? <laughs> I'm talking about big industrial water users that pump five, 10, 15 million gallons of water a day. Those are the folks we really need to start pushing for more conservation so we're not bringing down this nasty modern water into our good pristine aquifer. Well, so how big of a, of, of a, of a situation, you know, is that in terms of, uh, you know, letting folks know uh, the conservationists and, and others that, look, we have a bit of a problem here. Uh, mm -hmm. And and uh, we need to start to look at some solutions uh, uh, to this problem. Uh, is there going to be receptivity to this, Sarah, do you think? Or is this going to be a bit of a fight? Or, I mean, uh, how do you see it from your perspective? Yeah, it's a great question. I think, you know, the, the response is going to be mixed. The people, we're going to be ready for action. You know, like we all want to protect this resource because it is one of the best things Memphis has going for it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the good news is it's taken so long to get to this point. But the bad news is we know how slow politics can move and we don't want to just be waiting around for, you know, MLGW or the health department to, you know, save us. This is really about the people, you know, taking action and pushing for this type of conservation and for this, these types of solutions. And so I think the pushback we're going to feel is going to be more from industry that's been able to pump really pure, really cheap water for a long time. Mm. And we still want them to have business here. We want them to be able to still operate and bring jobs to this area, but we need to make sure that they are also managing and protecting this water resource that we all, that we all, you know, have to use. It's a shared resource. It doesn't belong to just one of us. It belongs to all of us. Now, you know, I have uh, laid witness as have you to what I would consider people power, because the last time we had a little issue about uh, some possible drilling, some companies coming in here and, and then trying to derail some things. Uh, the people stood up, your organization stood up and a whole lot of folks stood up and said, uh, uh, not going to happen. Uh, and, and they moved them away. Uh, is this something that the citizenry uh, can get behind, Sarah, can get behind your organization and other organizations who are saying, look, uh, we have a problem. We don't want it to get any worse. Uh, here's what we need to do to try to to try to solve it. That's exactly right. You know, this is it's a little different than, you know, trying to stop one company or one bad project. So it is a little different. But this is about, you know, the community really understanding what this aquifer is and how we can protect it. So there's a public meeting that uh, the University of Memphis is hosting mm -hmm. this Thursday, September 21st at 5.30 p.m. It's at the Benjamin Hooks uh, Central Library. So that's going to be kind of the, the science explanation, what's going on and, and what we know now. Protect our aquifer and hopefully some community partners. We're starting to get motivated to host some additional public meetings later this year and into next to really start that rallying cry and get people power involved because this is this is the beginning. We just got this information like last week. Yeah, so last this week. Is yeah. Hot off the press. Yeah, absolutely. So we want to make sure people know about it. 
but time for action is coming soon and we really do need people power to move this stuff forward so i just got a question uh on uh our live stream uh line from your uh, your, your buddy jet lucas and jet yeah uh, jets jets wanted me to ask you this question uh you when you all last talked uh, you told you, you said something about uh, you'd rather use just a, a filter uh, on your tap uh, rather than uh, the bottled water that he was drinking. Uh, given what you just said about the uh, study, uh, do you still believe that a filter is better uh, than than you know the the, the bottle stuff? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you, Jet and Chip. So yes, I still think filters are better. Um, you know, when you're drinking out of a plastic water bottle and, you know, it's been shipped across the country, it's been in hot warehouses, hot trucks, plastic is leaching into that water. Mm. So you're drinking a little bit of plastic, but also, you know, who knows that water source? Some of this stuff is like, you know, Dallas public water supply. Like Dallas is drinking nasty river water. We don't want that. <laughs> so I still think we have some of the best water in the country. And even in some of these areas where we're seeing, you know, this modern water seeping in, but filters are definitely still, you, you need, if you have lead in the area, you want to make sure that you are still filtering um, your water. So still drink that mimosago for water i promise it's gonna be way better than your bottled stuff <laughs> well there you go so you know before i let you get out of here you know this uh, situation is just starting to percolate as you said you're going to have a public meeting uh in just a couple of days to kind of inform the public of this uh because information is power and yeah. right now i think uh, a lot of folks may not know uh, about uh, some of the issues that, that are cropping up that's why these public meetings are very important and we want to stay with you uh, in terms of that and that please let me know when these meetings are because uh this is an issue really uh, for all of us to pay very close attention to no exactly no you're exactly right so i got one more plug real quick and no. then uh, i think it's my time out of here but um protector aquifer we're hiring two fellows that's right so if, that's right yeah. yeah yeah oh you're gonna you were gonna get me there that's all um, yeah i forgot all that. <laughs> you got it yeah absolutely yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. so yeah if you live or work in 38109 so southwest memphis or 38106 in south memphis mm -hmm. you know those are areas that protector aquifer has worked in before there's a lot of contamination issues and concerns down there legacy pollution wow. industries taking advantage of the area yeah. so we want to hire two fellows um, for the next nine months, $20 an hour, 20 hours a week. It's going to be half training and then half support on like, how do we, how do they get active in their community? So protect our aquifer.org slash now that's got the uh, job announcement on there. And the deadline is this Friday. So if there's any listeners out there, 38109, 38106, mm -hmm. we'd love to have y'all apply, get y'all some money and support the cause in those neighborhoods where, you know, there's a lot of advocacy to be done. Absolutely that. $20 an hour for the next nine months. Uh, be an advocate, be a water warrior under the Queen Water Warrior. Uh, thank you, my good friend. Uh, Sarah Houston, ladies and gentlemen, Executive Director of Protect Our Aquifer. And if you uh, need any more information, uh, you give them a call. Uh, they will be glad to uh, to handle that. Sarah, it's always great to see you, my friend. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show tonight. And again, keep us posted on uh, whatever we need to do to keep the community posted as well, okay? I appreciate that. Thanks for the work you do and keeping us all informed, Chip. All right, take care. Take care now, Sarah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Houston, uh, great interview. Great interview. A lot of folks uh, are, are into the water deal here. I, I can see that on the Facebook Live line. Uh, we are going to, we thank Sarah for, for all of her work. And we're going to take a break. And when we come back, uh, we're going to shift gears and we're going to talk about a history-making moment uh, with uh, someone uh, who uh, has entered the world of politics uh, in a local community. And we're going to find out kind of how she feels she can make a difference. Michael Harris, what is up on the Facebook Live? My man, Jay. GKP, you already know who it is. Worth is checking us out tonight. Jed Lucas uh, on the line this evening. Uh, Pearl Walker, good to see you, Pearl. Uh, Earl Fisher, the good Reverend Earl Fisher, is checking us out this evening. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's see here. Dr. Denise Weber is uh, checking us out uh, this evening. Uh, Brett Thompson, Marshawn Chrysler, Drill McLaughlin is checking us out. Rachel Johnson, you guys are coming in tonight. I really appreciate that. Listen, let's go to Michael Williams, my man, Mike Williams. Uh, good to see you as well. Hi, Audrey. How are you? Uh, we're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, we're going to continue on the Monday edition of Real Talk Memphis right here. I'm Chip. 
Don't go away. If you like real talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his real talk show page and you can be a part of the real talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. Goner Records is proud to sponsor WYXR. The 20th Goner Fest is coming to Rail Garden Thursday, September 28th through Sunday, October 1st, featuring bands from all over the globe, including the OCs, the Gories, the Mummies, Coffin, Sweeping Promises, Marked Men, and over 20 more bands and DJs. Ticket and streaming information at GonerFest.com. Music Export Memphis presents the Tambourine Bash Thursday, October 12th at the historic Everton Park Shell. This annual celebration of collaboration is a one-of-a-kind night of Memphis music featuring more than 30 musicians and collaborative sets culminating in a finale super jam produced by Royal Studios' Boo Mitchell. All proceeds power Music Export Memphis's grant programs for Memphis musicians. Ticket information and event details can be found at musicexportmemphis.org. The future of Memphis is in our hands. Early voting for the city elections started on September 15th and will go until September 30th. Your vote is your voice. Beat the crowds and get out to the polls early to weigh in on the leadership you want for Memphis. Schedule and polling locations at bit.ly slash vote early 901. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday. Oh, chip with you. I need to stop messing with this mic. Uh, and uh, glad to have you back. Uh, I see my, my 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 man Kelly D. Price is checking us out this evening too on Facebook Live Line. Listen, my next guest is someone who I, I would say uh, to say that she's busy is an understatement. Uh, she owns. Uh, she's a restaurant tour. Uh, she owns a, a restaurant in Bartlett called uh, Biscuits and Jams. I've actually been to that restaurant and. The food is very good, but she has also uh, endeavored to be a public service, uh, a public servant, excuse me. Uh, and recently she was selected uh, out of a group of about, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 people uh, to uh, to uh, fill in the seat of uh, an alderman uh, in the city of Bartlett who had to step away uh, for some health reasons. And she was selected uh, in that position. Uh, and her name is Monique Williams, and she joins me now. And Monique, it is so good to have you on the show. And let me offer my congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, and thank you so much. I know you've come and eaten at the restaurant. We've talked. Yes, we have. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you remember me. I'll be back one of these days pretty, pretty soon. So listen, uh, this is a big deal uh, because uh, you are the first uh, person of color uh, to assume a, a position uh, as an older person uh, in the city of uh, Bartlett uh, in its history. Uh, so that's a that's a big deal, uh, uh, Monique. And uh, I guess I need to ask you first uh, how you decided that this was something that you were were interested in in pursuing. So to make a long story short, um, I decided to go and, and just to be all just to be completely honest, I didn't think I was going to get appointed. Uh, but I wanted to go just to share my voice and my thoughts. Being a, a small business owner in Barlett and a resident of Barlett, I wanted to, to go before the Board of Aldermen, a mayor and alderman, just to voice my opinion and just really 
put my my thoughts and my feelings on the you know on the table about sure. some things and you know and maybe if I did that my thought was, was someone would hear me and then I would be able to get a platform to maybe have opportunity to discuss some things um you know that I think would be beneficial for the city as a small business owner um prior to being a uh, appointed as uh, alderman, uh, alderwoman position four. Yeah, I uh, am a member of the Bartlett Station Commission, so I was a commissioner on you know on that board uh, prior to taking uh, this or being appointed to this position. So you did have a, a, a bit of experience, uh, you know, in, in in the city culture, but I think you you brought a, a unique perspective to it, being a small business owner in Bartlett. Uh, and, and and seeing some of the things that you that you uh, had to had, you know the, that you were involved in there, uh, this is a pretty big challenge. It's interesting you said you didn't think that you would be uh, uh, selected. So obviously, when you were selected, it was a big surprise. Now, uh, I think yeah. I read somewhere recently that you uh, recently attended your first uh, uh, board of aldermen meeting. Correct. Correct. This okay. past uh, Tuesday, last week, it'll be two weeks tomorrow. I mean, a week tomorrow. Yeah. It'll be it'll be a week tomorrow. Uh, so what is it that you think uh, brings you uh, to this place? I mean, the, the perspective of, of being uh, selected uh, to a position like this where you're making decisions uh, that are based on, uh, you know, your constituency, uh, your position four out there. And uh, so you have a group of people that you're responsible to uh, in terms of some of the decisions that you make. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to ask you, you know, I mean, uh, so far you've only been in one meeting, so you're still getting your feet wet. But but I do want to ask you uh, now that you are in the position and maybe you've had a little time to think about it. What types of initiatives uh, would you like to put forth uh, in the city of Bartlett uh, moving forward? So first, the first and foremost is that I believe in community. And one of the things that I remember saying, because I was so you know, like surprised by the decision, not that I wasn't ready for it if it if it happened, but community. And you know, as being the first African American Black person or person of color to be on the board, you know, Barla is made up of so many different people. Mm -hmm. You know, people of all nationality, nationalities, ethnicities, um, and my thing is the city needs to look like the city uh a lot of times though i don't think that we are present and that's just speaking from an african-american standpoint you know a lot of the things that i attend for being a small business owner or being in certain uh places um in the city it's because you know I'm a small business, so I find out. I, you know, I look for the information. I go out. I ask questions. Mm -hmm. What can I do to help? Because mm -hmm. I live in Bartlett and I own a business in Bartlett. So my goal is I want Bartlett to grow. So my platform, I would say for me and what I want to do in this position is build community. I need people to come out of the house. I need them to be involved. Uh, you know. Uh, are so you are you saying that you would like to see the city perhaps become more diverse? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But for that to happen, uh, and for me, so let me take a step back. I don't think there's um, anything that's from a government standpoint, I'll say that, uh, from what I see so far, you know, I'll be honest with you. What I've seen in me being involved and living in Bartlett, um, I, from my, my perspective, Bartlett's been quite fair and, and a really good place to live for me. Mm -hmm. uh, also being a business owner, it's been quite fair, pretty good place to have a business in, according to how I am. Mm -hmm. I can't speak for everybody. Sure. But what I do notice is in a lot of the places that I, I am in or a lot of places that I go, I don't pe don't see people that look like us. And it's not, not not a lot. I'll say that. You see, so it's not Bartlett. I just don't think we either. And what I've heard from uh, since I've been appointed is that, oh, I didn't know that they had this, or I didn't know that this was going on. So my goal is to make people come out and get involved, you know, and learn what's going on this, in the city. And when you start learning things and being present, then there comes about 
areas and opportunities to make things a little bit more diverse. Yeah. So you're talking about uh, people being more, uh, 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 you know, in, inclusive and, and present, as you say, uh, to really kind of see and understand uh, how to uh, help to make. And, and those type of uh, uh, situations and conversations that you have with citizens that you speak to uh, would give you ideas, I would imagine, as to how you would continue trying to move the city forward uh, in, in various areas, because you do bring a, a certain perspective. I live in Bartlett myself, and, and you know, I mean, we are the minor, minority population out there. Uh, but, you know, again, there's, there's plenty to uh, get into and there's plenty to understand about our city. And one of the things that I've noticed on your website in particular is, you know what, it's not about me, it's about we, it is about Bartlett, we are the community, and I need to hear your voices and I need to hear your suggestions because uh, only then, uh, then you can sort of formulate a plan on on how you want to attack moving forward and and being you know more promotional in terms of our city. Correct? Yes, correct. Being more effective because you know you, I'm, I'm trying to choose my words in a way to say you know you know it out of sight, out of mind. You understand? So it's like for people to consider, for me to think about you, Chip, say it, for me to think about you or consider you in any form, I have to see you, you know, because sure. we talk, we have conversation, we find out, hey, what's going on with this? Sure. I would love if we could do that. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, we're not as present, you know, like you said, being a minority, we're not as present as we should should be in being involved in the community. You know, I think Bartlett for so many black people is like, you know, even me having a business, oh, I don't come to Bartlett, you know, or, you know, you know, wow, or I don't miss around, that's you know, in Bartlett. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think even staying in Bartlett, I think a lot of people of African American uh descent or, or black or whatever, they still have that kind of mindset, even though they live in Bartlett, because it's, you know, we feel like it's a safe place to live. Sure. But we don't mess around in Barley. And what I'm saying is we need to get involved in our city so that we can, you know, your thoughts, your ideas, you know, and things you can bring to the table can be considered, you know. And I think that's what I want to kind of help to um, bring that forth. Like, hey, what would you like to see? You know, what sure. what is it that what is it that you would like to do or you know, are you interested in doing this in the city where sure. you know they have a, a board or a commission or they have a this project coming up and they're looking for volunteers? Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of times we don't know about those things. And I'm saying we, meaning African-American, black people in our community. And it's, it, you know, if you go to the Barton website, it's readily available. There's other places. So I just want to make sure that we're well informed and we get involved in our community because the community is diverse and, you know, and it's more than just one race or one uh, ethnicity. It's it's made of so many different pe type of people let me you know, ask, in Bartlett. Let me ask you one final question. Do you consider yourself a trailblazer? I, I guess I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. I, I mean... Well, um, you know you're the first, right? I mean, there'll, yeah, never, and the there'll never be another first. So that, that that's why I asked that question. Yeah, there will not be another first. I am the first... And I hope that I do uh, a good job. I hope that I represent our city well of Bartlett. I represent the African American community well, the the community of women that are in Bartlett. You know, just um, I just want voices to be heard. And I think we have a great administration in Bartlett. I think we have a great administration that's willing to hear and listen. And I think we need to step up. And make you know our uh, hold them ideas accountable. and thoughts known. Yeah, yeah, and hold and hold and hold uh, the, the the officials accountable. And correct? hold, yeah, and yeah. hold us accountable for it. Absolutely. Well, listen, Moni, it has uh, really been a pleasure talking with you. Uh, and uh, again, congratulations on on the, this position and of course your business. And if y'all. Get out to Bartlett, check out Biscuits and Jams. It's pretty soon. <laughs> She's got it going on out there. Anyway, Monique Williams, uh, all the woman, position four, Bartlett, Tennessee. Thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. I really appreciate it. Great having you.
Thank you, Chip. I'm looking for him. I have some biscuits waiting on you, too. Oh, okay. Don't even start. See, you're starting already. Thank you, Monique. Take care. We'll talk down Thank the you. road. Okay. All right. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Excellent. Excellent interview, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take another break. And when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about your health. And I don't think it includes biscuits, but that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with that later. This is Real Talk Memphis. I'm Chip. <laughs> don't go away. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. WYXR is supported by the On Stage at the Halloran Center featuring the Travelin' McCurries on Friday, October 13th. The McCurry brothers were born into the bluegrass tradition and have teamed up with a line of musicians to take the tradition of the genre to new heights. More information at orpheum-memphis.com. WYXR is supported by Mempho, presenting Green Sky Bluegrass at Minglewood Hall on Thursday, November 16th. This is an all-ages show and will include an opening set by Lindsay Liu. Ticket information and availability at MemphisPresents.com. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday evening. And we're going to talk a little bit about your health now. This month is Sickle Cell Awareness Month. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, there are many folks uh, not only here in Memphis and Shelby County uh, who are dealing with uh, sickle cell, either the, either the disease or the trait, uh, but even nationally as well. But there are a lot of other things, uh, that the health challenges that we have here. So I'm very happy to have uh, uh, on the show uh, Dr. Chidi Zacchaeus, uh, and he is a scientist, he's an educator, uh, and he's the director of Fahardi Health. Uh, and Dr. Zacchaeus, it's good to see you, and thanks uh, for coming on the show tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. So listen, um, uh, you're having a, a health event coming up here uh, relatively soon. Uh, and uh, why did you feel it was important? I mean, obviously, you, you're a doctor and you deal with a lot of uh, people in a lot of different health situations and circumstances. But why was this so important? Uh, because I know that one of the things that you emphasize is really uh, informing the public. Yes, yes. It's it's important because when you are in a, in a biomedical system, and you realize that the language we use in that system is different from the ordinary language. And so a lot of people don't really understand science and they don't understand their body. They don't understand anything that goes on in the the medical world mm -hmm. and so if you're having a problem you don't really know what to do where to go and oftentimes you you ignore the problem and it piles up until it becomes a bigger issue and if people know a lot of this information and educated about it it will reduce the burden on the healthcare when it, it becomes bad so we don't want it to get bad we want you to be informed about it to understand it and to start doing some preventive measures ahead of time so it doesn't become a bigger issue later on so I feel it's important not only because that's that's a calling, that's something I've been passionate about my whole life, but because our community needs healing. And to do that, we need to start with educating individuals to understand their body, to understand diseases, and to know what to do when they notice any other signs and symptoms of those diseases. Well, that's very interesting uh, because uh, I think uh, a lot of us uh, perish from a lack of knowledge. And, uh, 
you know, what you're trying to do is to let people know really on the front end uh, some of the things uh, that we need to do. Now, in reference to sickle cell, uh, which, of course, as I mentioned, it, it is a pretty good problem. Now, it's a, it's a trait, right, that, 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 uh, that people get. And I do know now that they are actually testing uh, newborns that come out to see if their parent in particular uh, may have had the sickle cell trait uh, to see if they have it. Am, am I correct in that? Yes, the, the test recently, U.S. has done a good job in testing uh, newborn children in, the, in all 50 states. In Africa, it's really terrible because there's no testing for it. And so you have the large proportion of children being born with the disease. Mm -hmm. About 100 and, 120, uh, 30,000 children get born with the disease. And most of them die within their fifth birthday. Oh, wow. So the testing in those regions is not prevalent. And I, I'm working with an organization called Let's Create Together noun.org and this organization is trying to address that problem in africa in the u.s i think a lot of problem is is part ignorance in not only from the parent side but but to everyone and we need to understand the disease a lot more better even though you're being tested as a child sometimes the testing might not be adequate if you do a genetic testing it might give you awareness that this particular gene is actually mutated mm -hmm. but if you only do a blood sample uh, the blood sample is not sufficient because within the first six months of the child being born, that blood sample is not going to give you a sickle cell, red blood cells, because the child is still operating from a different gene called the, the fetal hemoglobin gene. And that fetal hemoglobin gene is not really mutated. Nothing is wrong with it. It's only after six months that that fetal hemoglobin gene starts to decrease and the adult hemoglobin gene starts to become expressed. And the adult hemoglobin gene is what's usually mutated. So if you test a child within the first six months or three months or so, or right at when they're born and you only did blood tests, their blood might actually look normal because nothing is wrong with it. But if you wait after six months or maybe a year and you do the test, it might give you a more sickle cell uh, red blood shape. And so if you do a genetic analysis, a DNA analysis, it might give you a much more better informed decision to know which gene is mutated rather than just looking at the blood cells. I hope that that explained it. No, enough. yeah, yeah it, it, it does. Um, so the the event that you're having, uh, this this health uh, uh, fair, if you will, a healthcare event, tell us a little bit about that and uh, why you thought it was so important to, to, to hold that. Yes, I thought it was important not only because, again, this is a disease that's dear to me. I know people who are affected by it. And I work with the organization that's trying to address it in Africa and the uh, African Village Institute of Memphis, they are also trying to address health uh, concerns and health challenges. Sickle cell disease is what I'm starting with because this month is a sickle cell uh, disease awareness month. The next month I'll be doing a different disease like, you know, inflammation and diabetes and mm -hmm. inflammation and heart disease mm -hmm. to help people understand. And so what you, the reason why I also start with sickle cell disease is because when you understand sickle cell disease, you really understand most diseases in general because they have so much to do with inflammation. And inflammation, when it happens in your body and you understand inflammation at its core, you will know what to do. You, you have some natural remedies you can use. You can go um, and consult with a doctor and be informed and you can communicate with them from that level. And so explaining sickle cell disease will help you understand inflammation. And when you understand inflammation, every other disease will make sense to you once you've been explained. That's why I decided to start with sickle cell disease. Wow. Okay. Uh, you know, as a people, um, we we generally, uh, as an African American culture, uh, we generally uh, we have bad habits. Um, in particular, uh, our, our, our nutritional habits, uh, and we all know this. Uh, you know, yeah. diabetes. High blood pressure, as you mentioned, heart disease are just, uh, you know, three of the big ones uh, th that affect us the most. And so it sounds mm -hmm. like, you know, what, what you're really doing is targeting, uh, you know, as you talked about, inflammation uh, and, and, and what we need to do and pay more attention to as a culture uh, to sort of keep us moving in the right direction. Because we do, we have bad habits. We have bad eating habits. We, have, we don't exercise. Yes. We don't do some of the things that we need to do. And those are the type of things that you're really emphasizing. A a am I correct in that? Yes, I'm emphasizing a key central component to what I emphasize is that you are earth, you are water, you are air. And so if you understand that this, this part this is a part of your body, you're not just a physical component. Uh, you, you are also water and your body is 75% water. Mm -hmm. Your body, uh, physical body 
99% or so of what makes everything about you is in the dirt. Exactly what's in the dirt is what's in you, what's made you. Mm-hmm. And so you need to understand that you have to keep, like, like you keep your car oil in service every often. You have to constantly give your body those things it needs to keep you healthy, to, to sustain you. And if you don't give your body those minerals, those vitamins that comes from the ground, it's not going to help us heal you. It's not going to help repair many of the damages that it's been causing from all the, the processed food or so much of the things you put in your body. And so that gets the point where your body says, you know, I'm going to give up because you haven't been taking care of me. And so instead of waiting to that point, you have to understand that everything you need comes from the ground. That's the first thing you need to get drilled in your head. And if you go to the ground and get your, your food, your fruits, your vegetables, and consume those, you will get all the, the minerals and the vitamins, as I said earlier, that will help you balance your body. And the goal is to bring you back to balance because right now, as you mentioned, those bad habits of eating has made your bo- body into a chaotic environment. It's you know, in a way a lot acidic and those starts to cause a lot of issues. So when you ingest the things that's gonna bring you back to balance, which are mostly alkaline and things that are rich with these minerals and vitamins and all this life sources, it's gonna bring you back to balance. And that also come with with drinking enough water, yeah. you know, trying not to consume too much soda because it's not good for you. Sure. And at the same time, you know, walk a little bit, maybe 30 minutes, mm-hmm. go outside and get some sunlight so your body can make vitamin D naturally, mm-hmm. go and breathe fresh air. Like these simple things you should be doing, yeah. I think it's what I'm trying to emphasize so we get on the preventive side of the medicine than winning until, until it's too late. Before I let you go, when when is the event? When, when, when uh, you know, when is it going to happen? The event is scheduled right now at the North Branch Memphis, which is right close to where the African Village Institute of Memphis is. Yeah. And it's scheduled for September 30th from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. It's both in person and online. So if you do okay. want to get online, you do have to go on and register ahead of time so you can the link will be sent to you. And if you um, can't find the, the address available, it, just go to my website com slash event that's fahari f-a-h-a-r-r-i health h-e-a-l-t-h dot com slash events and you can see all the events that are scheduled to come this month and in the next few months click on the on the sickle cell one and it will take you to a site where you can register and then mm-hmm. i will send a link to you um, before the event but yeah. yeah come and learn what you can and hopefully what you learn will be of service to you absolutely that thank you so much uh, dr zakis for coming on the show tonight i really appreciate it and thank you for all the great information as well and uh hopefully uh this uh first event that you are putting on is going to be one of many appreciate your time tonight thank you so much we we, we appreciate you thank you for inviting me absolutely yes sir you too so uh there you go ladies and gentlemen and you know the- he said that many of us don't want to hear uh, about uh, health and nutrition and things like that. Now, my friend Jet asked uh, about um, uh, COVID. And yeah, uh, COVID is, is that little subject that none of us want to talk about. Uh, but COVID numbers nationally in this country are starting to rise. And you need to take the necessary precautions in terms of that. You have COVID and then you have uh, the flu season, which is uh, about here, uh, and uh, RSV, which is a respiratory uh, illness uh, that affects uh, children and older folks as well. So look, I'm not going to tell you to get a flu shot, but I'm going to tell you to get a flu shot. Uh, If you don't want to get one, that's on you. I'm getting mine. And also, there is a new vaccine for COVID uh, that should be available sometime this week at your local pharmacy. You might want to check that out as well. Because, uh, show of hands, how many want to go around wearing a mask again, huh? I mean, actually having to be made to wear a mask. There you go. So anyway, thank you. As Brim plays this out, it's been a great show. Great show. Uh, And a lot of folks on that listen. Uh, I missed you all last week. All last week, all you all were busy. Every last one of you were busy uh, on this uh, <laughs> on the on the live stream. But you're all back tonight, and even some new faces. So thank you, uh, all the regular folks, for uh, tuning in, checking us out tonight, listening, supporting the show. Continue to support to, to support the show. Uh, check out the podcast. Download the podcast. Tell people about the podcast. However you do it. You know I appreciate it. I humbly appreciate it. So for Nicole, for Bryn, for Lola, and Level Lola, same person, by the way, I'm Chip. Have a great week. Be safe. Be careful. 
And just take care of yourself, okay? We'll talk to you soon. I'm out. It's real.